All right, students, I want to talk to you about grades and retakes. The first thing I'm going to point out is that it would be a good idea to pull out your syllabus and check out the grading section in your syllabus. In this section, it outlines kind of how to understand the grade book and then the retakes and how to do retakes, as well as extra credit or anything like that. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit of that right now. But yesterday, you guys took a test and you have some experience now with things in the grade book. So we're going to have a hypothetical here and say, let's say a student got a 77% on the unit zero test. Now, a big difference between what you might see in the grade book in a different class and this class is you're not going to see that 77% in the grade book. Instead, we take that 77% and we break it apart. The reason for that is because what does that 77% actually even mean? Some students will look at that and go, oh, I don't really like that grade, and, and I didn't do a very good job overall on my test. Well, the reason I don't put that grade is, is because it's hard to tell exactly where things went wrong. So instead, I want to give you a recommendation. If you were to go to Schoology, and I mean the online version of Schoology, unfortunately, this isn't in the app version, but in the online version of Schoology, there is this mastery button. And if you click the mastery button, you're going to see a bunch of breakdown of your grade that looks like this. So these are three targets that were taken on that unit zero test, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3. Now, yours may be out of order. And the reason for that is, is this is just an order of which targets were done well versus which targets were not done so well. And so here you can see that this person got 100% on that 0.1 target. That's really good. Now that's what's going to go in the grade book. I'm going to make that a 10 out of 10 in the grade book. Now molar conversions, this person got a 9 out of 10. And that's awesome. So actually, this gives us a little bit more information about the student and he, he or she can say, hey, I actually didn't do that bad of a job on two of those targets. So what target really brought them down? Well, it was the writing equations target. This person got a 4 out of 10. So what are we going to do about it? How are we going to fix that? Well, if you read the syllabus, there's a section in there that talks about how to retake a learning target. And there's really only three steps. And so the first step is basically all, all the science notebook work must be fully completed. A lot of students go into the, into the test and haven't fully finished their notebook. Maybe there's some practice problems they didn't get to, or maybe they didn't take those notes. Well, that really hinders a person in doing well. So you gotta make sure that all of the science notebook work is done first. The second thing the student needs to do is fill out what's called a learning target request form or an LTRF, as well as attend a specific leap time tutor session Finally, after that, the student's ready for a retake. They just need to basically make an appointment for that retake. So let's talk about these steps. Specifically, I'm going to talk about the learning target request form. The learning target request form looks something like this, and hopefully you have one of these in front of you right now. Now, the front side is the side that you should do on your own time, so we're going to go over that. The top of it is kind of starts you off and says, you know, what am I struggling with? What specific target? So you fill out the course, which could be chemistry, physical science, and then you're gonna write the target code that you're struggling with. This is where, where we're gonna get it from the mastery. So maybe the student was struggling with writing equations. Notice it also asks you if your notebook is fully complete. This is mostly a reminder. It has to be complete in order for you to get a retake, but don't forget to complete everything in your notebook so you have that information. If we go down the sheet, the next part is basically what tools are going to help me with this target. So it's going to ask you for some key vocabulary definitions associated with the target of the question. This is where we're going to look at the learning target um, bookmark in our notebook. We might find some definitions or some, some vocabulary that are really important for us to know. And we're going to write this in this section and we're going to make sure that those, those definitions get defined so we know what they are. Also, the science notebook reference pages. This is where we're going to list a bunch of pages that we're, are going to help us with this target. We're going to go through our notebook and make sure we know that. This is, again, just to get students to really understand that your resources are really what's going to help you here. Your science notebook especially has a ton of resources in it. And if it's not complete, you got to do it. And if it is complete, you might need to learn a little bit, some, some skills to go back and actually use them appropriately. If we keep going down the line, the next section is, what do I already know? So you're going to write in this top box, 
the things you already know, any definitions, you might show some examples, uh, do anything you can to, to tell what you actually know. Underneath that is some critical thinking about the subject. Now this is divided up kind of into two parts. Uh, the first part over here is the general processes and steps on the right side and the critical thinking. These go hand in hand. Maybe you'll choose a practice problem and you'll start showing the things that you know. And then on the right side, list the steps that you took in order to get that. Now I'll give you an example on the next slide because this also blends in with the bottom part. Where am I stuck? So here's an example of a student who needed help with writing equations. Now you can see here that this person knew how to determine formulas for compounds. So they show how charge cancels out uh, the things, so barium and chlorine come together, B BAC, A Cl2, so on and so forth. However, they weren't quite sure over here if the Cl was a diatomic or not in NaCl. They also knew how to put these things in a general reaction with reactants and products. Now where they were really stuck was balancing reactions. They don't know how to put the numbers up in front of these reactions here. And so this really helps this person realize where their points of confusion are. First, they don't really know how to do those coefficients. And second, they realized at this step, hey, I don't know if I really understand diatomics as I'm going through. This might be very similar to what your solutions or your problems are, or you might have completely different problems. But again, choose maybe some practice problems to go through and then identify the general processes and steps that you take to relate to those. All right, so once the front side is done, you're ready to start filling out the back side. This is a side I recommend that you do during a tutor leap session. So you can come in during a specific leap time and start showing some example problems and showing how you can study your point of confusion. If you read the top, this is where you're gonna show work. You're gonna show effort that you've actually started studying and, and doing these pieces. So when are the tutor leap sessions? Well, if you look at the outside of my door, there should be an availability poster. Now this one's specifically for 2019 semester two. So it's absolutely subject to change for other semesters or even this semester. So make sure you check out the one in front of the door. But you can see here in this specific one, there's tutor leaps on A, Tuesday A leap and Thursday B leap. So I recommend that you guys come in and here you're gonna form study sessions and you're gonna work with others who have similar problems with you to start filling out that backside. It's also a time to ask questions and to really understand your points of confusion. And so you're gonna come ready with those points of confusion. All right, so how do you retake a learning target? Well, we talked about what the steps are involved, but there's also some rules and regulations you might wanna be aware of. First of all, remember retakes are a privilege. They're really important to do and I really want you to do them, but don't abuse them. Retakes for a particular unit are only available until the next unit test. This is really important. You don't get to retake for the entire semester. You really need to be prepared for the following test. So you have until the next test to finish these retakes. And that continues on down the line. So once we take the unit one test, the unit zero te targets are no longer available for retaking. Once we take the unit two test, then you can't take the unit one test targets anymore. Only one target may be taken, re retaken during a leap session. You only really get about 25 minutes at, at max to retake a test. And so I wanna give you enough time to finish that target. So this is really just being helpful. So you might need to come in for multiple retake sessions to do the other targets. Or better yet, try to do really good on the targets so this doesn't become a problem. Retakes may not be taken on the same day tutoring was received by the instructor. This is mostly helpful for me as a teacher. It's hard for me to get those things to the testing center. You can't do them on the same day you get them, so you might have to do them the next day or in a few days. Uh, also, I don't believe in regurgitation learning where you learn something and then just regurgitate it really quick. So we're just trying to avoid that and really show that you really know the information. Finally, only the periodic table will be allowed on the retake. Other things, you can also use a calculator that's also okay and a whiteboard, but I'm not gonna let you use any other testing aids because you've done the extra mile and you've, you've learned the extra thing. And I, I really think that you should really know it by now. Finally, retakes will be accepted, will not be accepted after the final retake deadline. So I have to make a little uh, fix here. Retakes will not, not be accepted after the final retake deadline. So please plan accordingly. Your syllabus has this date and it just says, hey, we can't accept any more after this. All right, go ahead right now and try to fill in your own retake form based on a target that you were struggling with. Good luck, guys.